last weekend I was helping a friend deal with a lot of large logs that were dropped off for him by a commercial arborist. The uh, largest of those logs was over four feet in diameter, but they were good maple, so he wanted them as firewood for his uh, wood boiler. We uh, were able to cut up a bunch of them, but that uh, four foot log uh, uh, couldn't get all the way through it, and then it came to roll it so that we could finish the cut, and that turned out to be a real problem. We each had uh, some cant hooks, but what we found is that the diameter was so big that we couldn't get purchase into the wood to uh, hook into it. So I ended up cutting some grooves with my chainsaw into the wood so that we could hook in and try to roll it. It turns out that even with those hooks into the wood, the log was just too big for us to roll. It was about 15 feet long and as I said uh, over four feet in diameter. What I decided we were going to need if we had to do this again was to get some type of a hook that we could fasten to my truck so that we could roll it over. So I came up with this idea for a design. I'm going to use this piece of steel. What I'm going to do is make a hook it could be hammered into the log. So there will be a hook on this end, and then on this end I'm going to make an eye so that uh, it can be fastened to a chain and pulled by my truck. So I'll hammer it in and then use it to roll the log. I'll put a little bit of a curve um, from one end to the other so it can conform a little bit to the curve of the log. So first thing we'll do is heat up this end and bend it and make a hook out of it. Or I guess sharpen it uh, or narrow it down to make the hook and then bend it. This isn't quite ready to be hammering on, but I'm impatient so we're going to go ahead and get started.
Okay, we'll look for the uh, grinder to put the final edge on the uh, spike part of this. We want to conserve our heat, so we'll work the heat across this way. So we'll use this heat, let it migrate to here, heat this part up, and then the tough part, we'll have to put a bend in this. To do that, I'm going to put it in my huge vise and then hammer it to try and get it to bend right at that point. Once we're good with the bend, then we'll move the heat on up this way and we'll round the ends of this because we want it to end up with a ring-like eye. Straighten that out a bit. Hard to make it bend in the plane. Okay, now we're going to move the heat down to this end, and the first thing we'll do is round it, because we want uh, a rounded end when we make the hole through that to connect the chain. I've actually quenched the uh, other end of this so that I could hold it. The next step takes some precision, something unfortunately I don't really have. But uh, what I need to do is place the chisel precisely in the middle of the shaft so that I can cut through and open it up. If I'm too much off one way or the other, then one side will end up wide and when I try to stretch it to open it, it will curve around. So, wish me luck, I'm going to try to go right down the middle for about two and a half inches and I'll approach it from both sides to try and make it meet in the middle, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I pre-marked it with some uh, some holes. periodically have to cool it. Okay, we'll reheat and then we'll try from the other side. I carefully measured and pre-punched some tiny holes into that piece, but when it's all hot, you can't really find those too easily. So one of the nice tricks is to rub your hammer on it 
and some of the scale is a little bit cooler and it will end up in those tiny holes and show as a little black dot so that way you can find them when sometimes they would not be visible otherwise. So let's see how that goes. hole is up there and that's kind of in cool territory or yeah cool territory so we'll put it back in bring the heat uh, closer to where we want to be slitting it and also this time around I'm going to use one of these little saddles this is a, a well annealed piece of steel um, that makes it a lot softer than the hard steel on the face of the anvil when you cut into this, it's not going to um, be a great loss if this gets cut, and it will do a better job of preserving the edge on your chisel. this on through. Yeah, that's part way. Okay, so we got to slice through, flatten it out a bit, okay, and now we'll have to open that up. I don't get to use this particular hardy tool very often, but uh, I'm going to use this cone mandrel to open up the, uh, the eye here and then once we get it open a bit we'll start working it on the uh,
Okay, I think uh, it's round enough that we can start working it over the horn. We'll try and take this bump out of the top, try and close up that gap right there. Okay, I'm not going to try and make it fancy. I'm just uh, after a product that will work. Learning is about learning both what does work and what doesn't work. And unfortunately, this didn't work. The first problem was that when I tried to hammer it into the log, it turns out that this is very hard to try to hammer into hard maple. For one thing it's a little bit offset but even if it weren't for that this is so thick that uh, you'd really have to smash it hard to drive it any distance down into the uh, hard maple. Uh, I was only able to get it about half an inch in when I pulled on it it pulled right out. So I said uh, I've got to go ahead and cut a slot with my chainsaw into the log so that I can slide this into the log. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't work either, and we'll see shortly why. Here's a representation of the hook and the pull of the chain. After cutting a broad slot with the chainsaw and inserting the hook, we begin to pull one direction and the log resists in the opposite direction. Because the forces aren't in line, a moment is created and the hook tries to rotate counterclockwise, which is up and out of the slot. After that rotation, the forces are more in line, but the contact of the hook with the corner of the slot is now inclined. The bumper didn't come off. That yes. Is, I feel like this would be a whole different scenario if that wasn't also frozen. Yeah. That's really, because it, it didn't wiggle. Yeah. So, with that problem, I'm going to have to redesign this so that this ends up essentially perpendicular to the direction of pull. To get that more than 90 degree bend, I'm going to have to bend it about a point really. So what I'm going to use is this plate of uh, 3 8 inch steel. Put that in my vise, get the hook there, clamp it down, and then hammer on this side to try and bend that down. Okay, that's about right. So I'm going to say that this is the final product. Unfortunately, we've got about two feet of snow on the ground right now, so it's going to be three months before I can get the answers to two important questions. 
number one, is this going to stay in the slot? And number two, which is going to yield the log or my bumper?